Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. They can smell adrenaline. Wow. And so that's one, one of the things that they'll, they'll start to notice with the recipients. We also train them to notice generic things like foot tapping, hand wringing. We'll talk to a spouse or a family member and say, what do they do when they get upset? And they'll, they'll say, hey, sit down, I got a list. And we'll train the dogs to that list. I'm Sarah Fenske. As many as 3 million veterans suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Experts say that as much as 12% of veterans who served in recent combat operations suffer from PTSD in any given year. A nonprofit based in Maryville, Illinois, works to address that issue in the most practical of ways. The organization is called Got Your Six Support Dogs. And joining us now is its executive director, Nicole Lanahan. Nicole, welcome. Thank you. And we're also joined today by Andy Canning. He's a veteran who served in the Navy from 2007 to 2012. Andy, welcome. Thank you. So, Andy, I want to talk just a little bit about your um, your military experience before we get to your dog. You served for five years in the Navy. Where were you stationed? I was stationed on board the USS Carl Vinson out of um, San Diego, California. And were you in California then for most of your time? Yep. For okay. The biggest part of it. And so you also ended up in the Middle East for a bit. Correct. Okay. Did so? Did you see some things there that that ended up being hard to deal with? Oh yeah, of course. So how did that? When you came back home, back in the Midwest, how did that end up affecting your life? Uh, for a long time, I tried not to. Or I didn't think it did until I took a a hard look at myself in the mirror and realized that I was uh, an angry, um, tired person that uh, felt more comfortable sitting at home and not going and doing anything. And is that different how you'd been before your service? Oh, so much. Yeah. I was uh, much more outgoing before service. And you mentioned not just that you were angry, but that you were also tired. Were Were you dealing with things like sleeplessness? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was only getting about an hour, hour and a half sleep a night. Okay, that could certainly make a person tired and angry. <laughs> so what led you then to Got Your Six Support Dogs? How did you even find out about this organization? Um, well, through counseling and um, from my pressure, not pressure, uh, support from my wife. I mean, we had to have a long talk about things need to get better. And then uh, one of my friends is a trainer for Got Your Six and... Uh, and we can hear Arkham now, yeah. Arkham uh, sort of making his presence known. He's, he's, I think, maybe hoping for a treat here. Am I reading that expression properly? 100%. 100%. So Arkham comes from this organization, Got Your Six. And Nicole, this is the organization you're the director of. Tell us just a little bit about how this organization got started. When did you realize this was an issue? So I've been in dog training for almost 20 years. And... I started to get phone calls probably about 10 years ago from veterans and uh, first responders looking for PTSD service dogs. I had trained service dogs in the past, diabetic seizure alert dogs, uh, mobility assistance dogs, but I had never trained a PTSD service dog. And in fact, and I I have no problem saying it now, I was one of the biggest skeptics. Really? I really was. Uh, As a dog trainer, the people that were coming to me for PTSD service dogs, I didn't understand the medical tasks at the time, and I didn't understand how the dogs helped. It's very easy to understand how a diabetic seizure alert dog helps or a seeing eye dog because you can actually see the tasks that they're doing. You can see the tasks that PTSD service dogs do. Now I understand that. But at the time, I thought it was, oh, these people, they just want to be able to bring their dog on a plane. It's an emotional support animal. Let's stop calling them service dogs. So I was a huge uh, critic until I, I dove deeper hmm. and and learned so much. So so tell us a little bit about what you learned. I mean, what, what does a specially trained dog do for PTSD support? So it's so now you're going down the rabbit hole with me. 
Because now you're a believer. <laughs> yes, I am. I am a hundred percent believer. You have to have a really good understanding of PTSD uh, to understand what it is the dogs do. So I had to learn all of that. Mm. The the amygdala is this little almond shaped part of the brain and it stores memories of trauma there and the problem with that is it stores it in crystal clear clarity unlike the frontal lobe where where memories are supposed to get fuzzy around the edges that's normal so when I go through something traumatic and then I remember it the amygdala brings up the memory and it plays it in crystal clear clarity so much so that as I have this memory my brain cannot tell the difference between having the memory and going through the experience again. Hmm. Andy I want to just cut in here is this something that as you're hearing Nicole describe this does this ring true? 100 percent. Yeah that, 100%. that level of just clarity. Absolutely. And immediacy. It's it's just creepy to to be able to close your eyes and re-see the things that you saw that you want to forget so bad. Yeah, you're right back in it. And so And and the brain, like as you're doing this, the the brain says, "Okay, you're you're in a life-threatening situation again." So it just floods you with adrenaline. And constant the human body was never meant to be flooded with adrenaline constantly. Mm-hmm. And so when it does, we develop all of these chronic issues too, not just with the anxiety and depression, but also things like fibromyalgia and heart disease and even cancer because everything inside of you is so inflamed from the constant adrenaline uh, and cortisol that get flooded through. So the thing about PTSD service dogs, which is so cool, what their service tasks, one of them, there's many that we train them to do, but one of the things that we train them to do is interrupt anxiety symptoms as they start to develop. So because we want to be able to stop the anxiety attack in its tracks. So the dogs, if if Andy were to start getting a little nervous, which I'm, I'm going to hopefully not overstep and say maybe you were a little nervous coming in here which is why Arkham was a little fussy because he's already going hey Andy you're nervous but he's mm. not in a full-blown panic attack but and he is live on the radio and I mean that's a situation <laughs> that's it's nerve-wracking right and he's live on the radio so when when the dogs do that it kind of pulls us out of ourselves and we're going oh we're getting anxious now I can do these other things that I've learned to do in my other therapy like maybe I'm going to do box breathing or listen to a song I like and And it's so much easier to take that direction from a dog when a dog says, hey, you're getting nervous, relax, as opposed to a spouse saying, hey, calm down. Because when a spouse says it, you're like, get out of here. I'm done. No, don't tell me to calm down. But when a dog says calm down, you're like, oh, yeah, thanks, dog. So, so Nicole, (laughs) I got to ask, though, I mean, we've all had panic attacks that, that probably have that same thing, even if they're not driven by PTSD. There's some common factors there. How does a dog, how can a dog tell if we're having that kind of anxiety? Several things. So the the biggest sense a dog has is smell. And they can, we are actually talking about this in the green, green room. It's fascinating that it's come up again. But they can smell adrenaline. Wow. And so that's one, one of the things that they'll, they'll start to notice with the recipients. But we also train them to notice generic things like foot tapping, hand wringing. And then when we talk to the recipient's family members, sometimes we'll talk the, to the recipient and say, hey, what do you do when you're nervous? And they'll, they'll have no clue. But we'll talk to a spouse or a family member and say, what do they do when they get upset? And they'll, they'll say, hey, sit down. I got a list. And we'll train the dogs to that list. Sometimes. So this is really like individual level training. Exactly. So Andy, I mean, this seems like something. Did did your wife end up having a long list of here's all the things Andy does when he gets anxious? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And so your dog knows at that point. Uh, So what's he doing then to sort of pull you out of that? Uh, He, I said, he pesters me. It's like I get in the zone. uh, Last night I was walking around. I pace a lot whenever I get, have anxiety. And, uh, he chases me and just like push me over or, or knock me down. I say knock me down, put me in the recliner and just lay on me and look at me like, hey, that's it. You're done. Wow. So, just I mean, that's here. a pretty big intervention right there to actually like get you to, to where you're laying down. You're taking a deep breath with an out of control dog. That could be a huge problem. Uh, Nicole, that sounds challenging. It, and it's two part too. It's not just that they stop him, but if you heard too, he lays on him. Mm -hmm. And so then you have that compression therapy that some people who have uh, autistic children or have anxiety anxiety themselves benefit from that weighted blanket, that compression. And that's actually what they're, they're doing right then and there is giving that nice comforting weight. And so does that work for you? A hundred percent. At first, it's, it's kind of annoying because you're like, get off of me. <laughs> yeah. But then it's, I've, my wife even calls me out. Hey, he's on you for a reason. Just relax for a minute. He's I'm, doing what he was trying yeah, to do. Yeah, he's doing his job. 
sit there. And so I have to chill myself out. So, Nicole, you came in skeptical to this, and I'm sure you were, you aren't the only one, but I understand this is something where there's actually, um, you know, studies have been done mm-hmm. that show that these kind of dogs, they can have a huge impact. Yes. Purdue University released a study in 2019 that proved the effectiveness of service dogs. But there's a caveat to that. They're only effective as long as the person receiving the service dog is participating in therapy. Mm-hmm. And we measure our results ourselves. And our last class that we did uh, a year-end review with reported an 80% decrease in overall PTSD symptoms. Wow. I mean, that seems huge. Massively huge. So, Andy, you've had kind of a, a complicated journey as far as service <laughs> dogs go. I understand you started with um, uh, at Thanos. Yes. Is that his name? What ended up happening with that? Uh, it just, we weren't the perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Um, he had more drive than I had uh, work for him to do. I couldn't challenge him enough. Um, so he would get bored and he would whine, and it would, in turn, drive my anxiety up. Um, however, whenever whenever we were working, he, that dude, did an amazing job. He knew his job and he knew his purpose, and he, in just a few short months that we were together, he did outstanding. So you could tell a service dog is going to help, but maybe not this service dog. Correct. Okay. Does that happen much, Nicole, where it's just, it's not a perfect fit? Thanos, unfortunately, was a product of covid in the COVID dogs that we've seen, and a lot of these COVID dogs have anxiety, he was one of the first years that we were unable to train our dogs in public. Because mm, just things weren't happening in yes, public. Yes, we had the highest washout rate of any service dog class that year because we weren't able to get our dogs socialized in public all 2020, couldn't take him to the movies, couldn't take him to the restaurants. So when he was going to work with Andy initially, he was like, oh my gosh, there's all these people here. And uh, and we did see that several times with that class. Now that mm. things are opening up again, thank goodness, we're, we're seeing a, a major decrease. But yes, it can happen. So what happens then to Thanos? Well, so a couple different things, depending on like with, with his anxiety, the best thing is he's now a pet. Oh. And we, fa- we found him a wonderful home, actually with one of our veteran recipients who received a service dog from us, but they wanted a second pet. So he's with him now. Um, but it, it depends on the dog. Sometimes they wash out and become therapy dogs with different organizations. So, dep- so that's almost like a step down from a service dog, but, but they're still, you know, working. Exactly. We have a dog that goes to the VA in Jefferson Barracks and is part of their whole health program there. So when people come in for counseling, this dog is there just to kind of hang out and, and make everybody feel better. We're talking today to Nicole Lanahan. She's the uh, executive director of Got Your Six Support Dogs. They're based in Maryville, Illinois. They do great work uh, training and placing service dogs for veterans, as we talk about on this Veterans Day. They also work with first responders. We're also joined by Andy Canning. He's a veteran who served in the Navy from 2007 to 2012 um, and is currently here with Arkham. And Arkham has gotten very chill, which I hope means you're feeling pretty chill. Yes, I uh, kind of coming down and... Yeah. Settling in. Getting used to live radio. Right. <laughs> so, Nicole, we talked about what happens when a dog, like Andy's previous dog, ends up being taken out of the service dog role. Um, <clears throat> and that seems like that's got to be so disappointing because so much work goes into training these dogs. Can you tell us a little bit what the process is like for when a dog first enters your program, uh, what they go through to get to the point where Arkham is at today? Yes. So we're accredited through the Association of Service Dog Providers for Military Veterans. And one of our accrediting uh, rules is that every dog place must have 350 training hours under their belts before we can place them. And we each have our own individualized tests that the dogs have to be able to perform in order to be that service dog. So a lot of our dogs are in training from 12 to 15 months. Uh, we we acquire most of them as puppies, but we are committed to rescuing uh, at least 10% every year. Um, and so, yeah, it when they get all the way trained, but COVID was a year unlike any other. And um, hopefully the last year that we'll see everything shut down like that and interfering Mm -hmm. with training the way it did. So 350 hours. I mean, during those hours, I imagine that's not only to to train them to sense the adrenaline and to know what to do then. What are some other things you've got to get these dogs prepared to do or capable of doing? They have to be public access ready too. This Mm -hmm. means 
they've got to be able to go to like a blues game or a Cardinals game and have screaming fans all around them and not flinch. And, and they have to be able to, sometimes church is a funny one with organs. Um, they have to be able to go to a gym. They uh, get used to all these different sounds, smells, sights that maybe other dogs really aren't exposed to. Uh, and they have to be stable. They have to have the best uh, attitude. We can't have any kind of fear. They really have to love people, but not so much that it's going to distract them from their person. Because sometimes we'll have dogs that love everybody and they're distracted by everybody. And that's great. So they might make a better therapy dog than a service dog. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. So Andy, now that things are starting to open up again, and you know there are again blues, games. Have you put Arkham to the test of one of these high pressure situations for a dog? Not yet. However, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday's the day we're, uh, we're going to a hockey, to a blues game okay. in town. So this is going to be the big test. Yeah, this is the big test. We've been out to eat to restaurants and such, and uh, he's just done out, well, doing what he's doing now, just under there asleep. Yeah, I mean, he's just perfect. It, yep. it's, it's interesting, the change in Arkham between when we first came in and, and your anxiety was spiking, and now Arkham is just ready to hang out, be a public radio dog. This is how he normally is during the day. Yep. For the most part, yeah. he'll, he'll let me know when he's got to go to go to the bathroom and then yeah. just hangs out. He checks on me every once in a while. So what kind of difference has this made in your life, Andy? Uh, it's it's made my life a lot better, the the uh, confidence to go out in public and to to get my sense of purpose back and, uh, and grow and know that with the challenges that I've had with, with Thanos in the past, that if you put in the work – this is going to be a great pair and you're going to be so much better mm-hmm. moving forward than just sitting stagnant and not taking a chance on yourself. And Nicole also mentioned that this works best when people are also getting therapy. Is that something that's been a part of this this for you? Oh, 100%. Um, you have you have to want to get better. And I mean in anything you have to want want to get want to get the end result um, for anything to work, but it, yeah, therapy is definitely a must to work on yourself to help you, to help the dog. So you had said that initially this is something your wife kind of pushed you to do, that you kind of had to have a little wake-up conversation there. It's what spouses are good for, right? Um, So is she now like, yep, I told you so. This is so much better. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, There Obviously, there are some growing pains whenever you first get the dog into your family. But once you get those ironed out and start, you know, running fluidly as a cohesive unit, it's, it's, it's great. It's 100% 100% worth the effort um, to go through the training and and put yourself out there to get help, to, to reach out for help. So, Nicole, I understand Got Your Six Support Dogs um, has now placed 50 dogs. This is since starting not even that long ago. This was in 2015 Correct, that you yes. started. Um, so do you have more people wanting dogs than you have dogs to give? Absolutely. At this point? That is the unfortunate reality. There are far more veterans that need service dogs than there are organizations that are able to provide them. Um, so we're, we're super grateful. We've been working with um, – Purina and Purina Dog Chow, and they've been phenomenal because they've actually helped us uh, lobby. We've been big into lobbying the last couple of years and get the PAWS Act passed through Congress. Yeah, tell us about this PAWS Act. This just got passed in the last month. It did. It did. And it's amazing. So it's it's not quite – they're still figuring things out. It's it's not – going right now, but it, it's going to help provide funding for veterans to receive PTSD service dogs through the VA. So this is something where instead of just being funded by donations and, and fees, you'll be able to actually get some some support from the exactly. government. Exactly. Until it goes through, though, we are still relying solely on our donors. <laughs> so yeah, thank so you no, to everyone. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> yes. If this money does end up coming through, or if, say, you got a, a windfall, um, would you begin to scale up pretty quickly we that's that's the plan is right now we're doing one class of 10 dogs every year our eventual goal is to be able to do two classes of 10 dogs every year so to double what you're doing exactly so if people want to help with this i understand in addition to uh the pause act and, and that having support they can go to dogchow.com slash help and that's a way that you can support got your six um support dogs as well as other organizations doing similar work that's all through purina absolutely and they also you can also see their documentary there if you want to follow Andy and see his journey with Thanos and um, see two of the other veterans on their journey receiving dogs through us. 
Well, we want to thank you both so much for joining us today. Uh, Got Your Six Support Dogs Executive Director, Nicole Lanahan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And Annie Canning, uh, thank you so much, not just for coming, but for bringing Arkham. It's been a long time since we've had a dog in the studio, so thank you both. Thank you. We appreciate it. This episode was produced by Sarah Fenske, with audio engineering by Aaron Doerr and production assistance from Jane Mather Glass. This podcast was mixed and edited by Aaron. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.